Hands up if you remember Choplifter. I do, and I have great memories of playing it on the Commodore 64 back in the day. Well what might a love child between Choplifter and Minecraft look like? Probably something like Dust Off Heli Rescue 2, but can it stand on its own two rotary blades? Let's find out. The premise of Dust Off Heli Rescue 2 is simple. You are the pilot of a helicopter during conflict and must complete 35 missions in order to help your side be victorious and win the war. This is all very light-hearted and the game shows its hand very early in this respect by having amusing quips written on the title screen. These include things like, to fly is heavenly but to hover is divine, and never stand in a shadow that's getting bigger. These reminded me of the sense of humour shown by classic war game cannon fodder back in the 90s. The Minecraft inspired graphics are usable and a modern twist on a retro style. This was well received for my part, as quite honestly I'm getting a little 2D'd out. It seemed like every developer and their mum takes games into 2D now, often not actually doing it the justice it deserves. So seeing this game use a 3D polygon engine is nice. What I don't like about the graphics is just how much they've copied Minecraft. Even down to the artwork applied to the title of the game, I understand we all take influence, but it is equally important to stand on your own two feet. The vehicles are all well crafted and carry a certain charm. What I did enjoy was the more wacky vehicles which are only unlocked for those completionists with the optional dog tags littered around each level. A nice touch for sure and certainly better than loot boxes or random drops. Well done. Graphics, they're functional, fun and sometimes a little bit flat. 13 out of 20. It has that perfect 80s vibe about it and in fact, if you were to stick Predator, Commando, Escape from New York or Aliens on, mute the sound and play this game's music during one of the intense action scenes, you'll find it fits quite seamlessly. The sound effects are also appropriate with the sound of the chopper blades being overpowering, the missiles and bullets sounding forceful and the occasional speech coming over the radio adding a touch more atmosphere. One slight negative is that you cannot seem to turn down the sound effects. There is an option to turn off the music or turn off the sound effects or even turn off both but you can't turn one of them down. I quite like the music and wouldn't have minded being able to hear it a bit better while still having the added tension of the sound effects playing quietly over the top. Music and sound for me gets a 15 out of 20. The first thing I thought about the gameplay was, this really reminds me of Desert Strike on the Amiga. Here the gameplay is simple yet, as in the case with many mobile games, incredibly challenging and equally addictive. In the early missions you find yourself in the sandy deserts of an unknown country carrying out missions such as fetching injured soldiers or defending a downed convoy. Much of the challenge in these missions comes from the physics-based nature of the game. Take a simple cargo mission. You pick up a large box using the winch dangling from your chopper, that sounds wrong, only to find that its weight plays havoc with the handling of your heli. So much so that I often underestimated the impact of my swinging load and plunged face first into a cliff. As the game goes on, the difficulty ranks up considerably. You can no longer expect a merry jaunt to cross the skies, with homing missiles, faster machine gun bullets and generally a bullet hell coming in your direction. While the gameplay shows its mobile roots, sometimes simplicity creates a much more enjoyable experience. Without the clutter of a complex narrative or overly difficult controls, you can focus on what's important. Thankfully here that is a fun if sometimes frustrating flight system with automatic shooting, a range of different helicopters and a variety of different mission types. For gameplay, we say fun, fruitful but can be a little bit frustrating, 14 out of 20. Now we get to the crux of this game as far as I'm concerned, the controls, and they're certainly interesting to say the least. You press L and R together to make your chopper ascend, from this point L or R to turn left or right, and then the left stick to change direction. Shooting happens automatically as Mark has already mentioned. As you are flying you press the opposite button to the way that you are facing to balance your helicopter. So for example if you are flying left, a press of the R button will bring the rear of the chopper down a touch to balance your movement. It all feels very clunky to start with 
and leaves you scratching your head as to why they did not just use a button to accelerate and a stick for movement. But I have to be honest, the control scheme used seems to make your vehicle feel like a physical heavy object rather than just a sprite on the screen and it reacts to your every command. You can almost feel the sheer mass of the helicopter as gravity does its job and in some ways this adds to the experience. It will lead to frustrations though. In one mission early on you have to destroy five enemy cargo vehicles and the limited movement that the controls seemed to offer me must have led to me failing at least 30 times. Fly too low, crash into a building. Too high, my bullets won't reach. Take them head on and get overwhelmed. Try to use speed and overshoot my target. So what on earth do you do? Well, get better to be honest. As blunt as it sounds, I needed to get used to the physics of the controls and descend at the right time, which meant I got my shots off earlier and took the enemy by surprise. The controls are not perfect, not by a long shot, but they are different and add to the challenge in a positive way. For this, I give them 14 out of 20. This game includes 35 missions and while you can blast through some of them in a couple of minutes, the game still has a fair bit of longevity to it. The initial missions slowly increase the difficulty at a fair pace but seem to spike quite dramatically around mission 15. By this point you are traversing tight caverns trying not to touch the sides or being completely overwhelmed by enemy fire. You will definitely find yourself pressing the retry button more often than not for the remainder of the game. There are a number of vehicles, around 12 I believe, and you can unlock more weapons as you go on. This means you can go back and try missions you could not 3 star when you initially played through them. This all adds to the replayability. There are also 5 dog tags hidden within each level to try and find, and while I see the inclusion of these as a positive, I do have one issue with them. If you die while collecting these dog tags, you keep them. Now, to some people this will be a positive, as they will hate the thought of getting all five, dying and losing that progress. I do understand this, but personally I found it disappointing painstakingly manoeuvring the chopper into the tightest of spaces, collecting the dog tag and dying only to find out that I could have just smashed into the space. Hell for leather, and as long as I made contact with the dog tags just before becoming a helicopter shaped stain on the wall, I would have been awarded for the item anyway. Seems strange. It takes away some of the skill and makes the collecting of them a little superfluous. Perhaps saving your collectibles at each landing point would have been a happy medium. This game certainly has some legs and decent replayability and I award it 15 out of 20. In conclusion, I found this game enjoyable. I like the old school arcade style that it has to it. I am a retro gamer at heart and for me this very much appealed. I'm not the biggest fan of voxel style graphics, however in this case I do think they look pretty smart. I love the music and feel that the challenge that the game provides is fair, albeit pretty difficult at times, and overall I would say that this is a game worth picking up for the price. So I was a bit sceptical when I first booted up Dust Off, seeing the Minecraft style and the way the game played, I wasn't entirely convinced. It was a really fun experience and I actually enjoyed it much more than I thought I would but its mobile routes are very evident throughout the whole game and that for me was a bit of an issue. Overall I enjoyed it and we give the game 71%.